Welcome to the channel. Thank you for checking out this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit your forest photos in Lightroom Classic. Let's jump straight into the video. So we've already loaded up this image here into Lightroom. I took this photo a couple of weeks ago. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our profile. Now what normally happens, you work your way down through the tabs on the right hand side in the develop tab. And you work your way down. Now with any kind of forest photo, it's important that you get the image right in camera first before you start editing. Then what we're going to do is go into a basic tab. And this is how I like to do it. So follow along with me. First thing I do is change our profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This is going to give us basically a, the flat image to start working with. Next thing we're going to do is go to our crop tool and I'm just going to crop this image down until I'm happy with the results of the cropping. Now I don't like the blue at the top of the sky and quite like it that we've got this orange brown ferns at the bottom and the yellows in the tree and the yellow grass here in the middle so we're going to crop it about there and that looks perfect so we've cropped the image now we go into our basic tab and we start edit editing now the first thing to do is have a look at the overall color of the image and see if we're happy with a white uh, balance of the image in this case i did set the white balance before i took this photo so it's pretty spot on but i'm just going to move the sliders around just a little bit on the temperature side up in the yellows just slightly it was a little bit warmer than we uh, it actually was uh, it's about 10 12 degrees so we can either have it a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer I'm going to go slightly warmer to enhance some yellows now our exposure here uh, if we go to the top up here now histogram really we want to up that exposure just slightly so our colors are starting from the middle all our tones are starting from the middle and there we go. We're just going to pull all these colors about on our histogram now and get all the tones correct. So we're going to lower our highlights. And what I like to do, I like to look at the image and just move up and down the slider until I feel it's at the correct uh, place. So that's the highlights. Now the shadows, as we up the shadows, obviously we're going to be bringing out detail in the shadows. So I like to raise it slightly. Now our whites. If you haven't seen my other videos we have the left shift click so we hold down left shift and double click on the whites and Lightroom automatically adjusts our white balance to the correct level we can do that on the blacks as well and there we go so basically Lightroom's done a great job already now we can also double check this by down holding down left alt as we move the sliders now I like to bring out a little bit more black or our darks and what Lightroom uh, normally automatically does. Let's just double check the whites as well by holding down left alt. And we're just going to raise that and you can see if I raise that up we can see that the highlights or whites are coming through where the sky is in our image. Now we don't want to blow out our whites or we're going to lose uh, detail in our image. I'm just going to raise it until they start coming through and plus 28 there's about correct so our blacks are minus 60 and our whites are plus 28 now we go down to our presence and our texture is all the finer details so that's one way to simplify it and all we do is raise that up now we can zoom in by pr pressing ctrl plus on our image we're just going to raise the texture until we're at a happy place about plus 25 and the clarity is adding uh, detail to all the larger medium to large objects in our scene so all the outlines of the trees and etc with our clarity now if we raise that up and all i'm looking for is where it becomes clear in the image so about plus 30 on the clarity now i've got to be very careful with the dha tools here by pressing ctrl minus we zoom back out now we have got a little bit of haze in the background here. Now if I raise the haze, the haze, it's going to remove that haze, obviously. And if I lower the dehaze, it's also going to add more haze. Now it was quite a foggy, misty day, and just by changing our contrast in the highlights, shadows, whites, and black, we've lost a little a bit of that haze. So I'm just going to lower the haze until I feel it is about right. So around minus 10, and that's how I remember it. Now, Control minus to zoom back out to get the full image. 
that's looking really good at the moment. Now the vibrancy and the saturation, there's a bit of confusion over what these two do. Now the saturation boosts all the strong colours and the vibrance just every colour in your image. So if we raise the vibrance, you can see here at the hist histogram at the top, it's just pulling every colour about. And if you look at the image, it's pulling all the colours out. And the saturation will only boost the strongest colours in the our image. So if we raise that, you can see that it's pulling up only the yellows. So we've got to be careful with both of these. Now a good way that I like to do it is raise the vibrance to about plus 30, and then lower the saturation by about 10. And that gives me a good start in place. So that's the basic tab done now. We're in a good spot to start working on this image. The next thing I like to do is miss out the tone curve, HSL and color grading, go straight down to detail. And I'm going to zoom in, control plus on our keyboard. I'm just going to have a look to see where the detail begins to come through. And there'll be a point, you don't want to overdo your detail. It's about there, about 65 on this particular lens at the minute. Now the radius, we can hold down left alt and begin to raise it. Just where it starts to pop through, it's like stretching a piece of like cling film over your image and pressing on the image and you'll start to see the objects coming through your cling film. And that's what the radius does. So if you hold down left alt, you can see it's just starting to pop through or a gray sheet it's starting to come through the uh, cling film and show us what's in the radius is. And you can do the same here with the detail. So we begin to raise it and there we go. Now masking at the minute, the whole image is being sharpened. And if we go to the other end, you can see what's being sharpened and we need it quite high all we want to do is sharpen the tree outlines we don't want the whole image to be sharpened so we just raise it enough so we get an outlines of the trees and that's perfect zoom out again control minus and look at that that's looking pretty good already now by pressing y on your keyboard gives us a before and after there's our before and there's our after it's looking so much better already. In a minute, we're going to do some color grade into it to bring out them yellows and reds, and it's going to look fantastic. But first, press Y again. It brings us back to our image. Now zoom in, and we're just going to remove that little bit of noise in the image that we've created by adding sharpening. So I'm just going to raise it up until I feel it's about right. Now the problem with adding noise reduction is it's going to lose some of that detail, so you want to be very careful with this. I'm happy about there. Control minus again to zoom back out your image. And that's looking fantastic. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to lens correction and just double click on both uh, remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. As you can see, we've got the Sigma 18 to 50 mil f2.8, which has been taking this photo. Right, everything at the minute is looking pucker. So let's now go to the tone curve. And all I'm going to do is just pull these about left and right to see what brings enhances our image. By moving a slider one way, you'll find it enhances it or it reduces the quality of your image. So all I'm looking for is which way enhances our image. And just lowering, lowering, lowering them highlights brings out a little bit more detail in the background here. So I'm just going to lower it down slightly. And let's have a look at the lights. We do exactly the same with the lights. And that actually looks a little bit better if I pull it to the opposite side. Darks. I'm just going to minus 7 it. And shadows. Minus 5 it. And they're very, very subtle changes, but they make a big difference. So let's have a look at the before and after again by pressing Y on our keyboard. And that's looking absolutely pucker. Notice that we've lost this kind of... Um, greeny orange tint from this one to this one now. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of color correction in our HSL and color grading, and we're going to make it look fantastic. So the first thing I want to do is go in the HSL tab and always start with saturation. Now the main colors here are the yellows and greens and reds. So we're just going to move them about until we feel it's right. And this is going to, you don't want to overdo this. A lot of people just whack up their saturation and kill the image. Again, there's no right way or wrong way of doing this, but just go subtly with it and just work with it and go through all the colors one at a time, saturation, luminance, and hue, 
and then you can really get good at uh, get really good HSL color. Okay, so we've done the HSL tab now, and it's looking absolutely fantastic. Now we're going to go on to our color grading and just give this uh, photo a little bit of a style or look that I'm happy with. So we open color grading, now we've got the sh we can go into each of them, so this is our shadows and get more accurate. I like to use just a smaller wheel, though. I start off always with the shadows and just have a little look at where it's changing the colors and find what feels right for me image. So in this case, I'm really liking just a slight bit of orange. Now I'm going to be very, very subtle with this. Try not to overdo it again. Our mid-tones, let's have a little look. So this is really having, oh, I like that blue there. Sometimes that's what happens when you have the shadows going one way. If you use the opposite color, uh, it brings out the image a little bit more. So we've got going slightly blue on our uh, mid-tones so I'm just going to lower it until I'm happy pressing shift means you get fine the control over it like so and now our highlights let's just have a look around and this is our sky in the background again a little bit of blue there now we can alter the tone of how strong that is with the sliders underneath each one I'm just going to pull it back slightly and this is how you want to do it you just want to be very very gentle with each slider and just be happy where you're at with your photo now the blending and balance this is absolutely these are my best tools in lightroom especially the balance so we're just going to slide them each way and just see how it feels one way will feel right which enhances the image the other way won't feel right and it will degrade the image so just find which you feels right plus 66 there on the uh, blending now the balance is fantastic and there we go. If I go slightly to the left, you can see it's pulling them colors out. It looks really awesome. So I'm just going to go to about there. Now this is down to personal preference again. There's no right way or wrong way of doing this. That's looking absolutely fantastic. Let's have a look at the before and after by pressing Y again. So there's our before and there's our after. What a difference we've made already in Lightroom. And all we're doing is very subtly what you have to be careful with when doing forests or woods in Lightroom is not overkilling it and losing detail. If you'd notice we've really brought out the detail in these uh, tree trunks. Where they were slightly lost in this one, we've really enhanced them in this one. Right, okay, let's press Y again. And there we go. Now there is one more thing I want to do with this. And I'm just going to go to the basic tab again just pulled back on them whites very slightly just so we're not crushing them but that's looking absolutely excellent I might just raise the temperature just ever so slightly just to take rid of get rid of the blue tone and the tree trunks Again, being very subtle and very moving it minute amount and now it's just down to the haze how much haze was there on the day and it's about just finding that correct balance minus 20 is absolutely perfect now one of the effects i like to use is vignetting on all my uh, photos this is down to personal preference you move the post um, vignette in one way it goes white move it the other way it goes black and i just love adding a little bit of vignette in to all my photos so all you do is move it and just where you're happy moving each slider a little bit at a time finding what you're happy with and there we go, that looks absolutely fantastic. So there it is, let's have a look at the before and after again. There's our before, has a slight green tint, and there's the after, we've really highlighted them colors and made them colors pop. Now what we're gonna do is have a look at them full size on screen right now. This is the before, and here's the after. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've got sank out of it, give it a like down there. If you want to see further videos from myself, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see further, further videos from myself, make sure you subscribe to my channel. 
that really didn't make no sense at all there at the end but anyway if you enjoy my content consider subscribing we'll catch up in the next video see you soon guys